We had a mega to the power of a mega, an infinite number of times. This is equal to epsilon naught. The counting sequence for epsilon naught is one, omega, omega to the mega, omega to the mega to the mega, so on and so forth. So f epsilon naught of one is equal to f one of one, which is equal to two. Because we have one as our input, we pick the first element of the counting sequence. Now f epsilon naught of two, you pick the second element of the counting sequence, which is a mega, and this turns into f two of two, which is equal to eight. But f epsilon naught of three turns into f omega to the omega of three. This turns into f omega cubed of three, which we've known in our previous video expands to this monstrosity. But f epsilon naught of four is equal to f omega to the mega to the mega four. The uppermost omega gets diagonalized into four, and then omega to the fourth as we've known in our previous video, expands to an even bigger monstrosity. In general, we can say f epsilon naught of n is equal to f omega to the mega to the mega to the mega n minus one times. Omega to the epsilon naught is just gonna equal epsilon naught. This is our first fixed point. Because omega to the epsilon naught is just omega to the power of an infinite number of omegas. So adding one omega to the infinite stack of omegas won't be different from an infinite number of omegas. So, is epsilon not our biggest number? Can we not go bigger? Actually, we can. We can do epsilon naught plus one. Let's have f epsilon naught plus one of three. This breaks down into three copies of the f epsilon naught function. f epsilon naught three, as we've known, is f omega cubed of three. Now, f epsilon naught of f omega cubed of three. That's f omega to the mega to the mega to the mega, f omega cubed of three, minus one times. And then finally, we do f epsilon naught of this whole thing. We can't get bigger with the mega to the epsilon naught, but we can get bigger with the mega to the epsilon naught plus one. By the rule of exponents, this is equal to omega to the epsilon naught times omega to the one, or simply just omega. And this thing right here collapses into just epsilon naught. Now we have epsilon naught times omega. We can have omega to the epsilon naught plus one. We can have an infinite tower of omegas exponentiated with epsilon naught plus one on top. This sequence is called epsilon 1. This is the same as an infinite exponentiation of epsilon naughts. The counting sequence for epsilon 1 is omega to the epsilon naught plus 1, omega to the mega to the epsilon naught plus 1, omega to the mega to the mega to the epsilon naught plus 1, so on and so forth. Let's have f epsilon 1 of 3. That's equal to f omega to the mega to the mega to the epsilon naught plus one of three. You turn omega to the epsilon naught plus one into epsilon naught times omega. Then you diagonalize omega into three. This turns into epsilon naught times three. You turn epsilon naught times three into epsilon naught times two plus epsilon naught. 
And then Epsilon naught of 3, as we know, turns into a Mega Cube. Now Mega to the power of this whole thing right here, we do the rule of exponents once again. And then a Mega Cube gets expanded. But we have one last Mega here in the bottom. Now you can imagine how many steps it will take to break down. We can do Epsilon 1 plus 1. We can even have an infinite tower for Megas with Epsilon 1 plus 1 at the top. This sequence is called Epsilon 2. If we have Omega to the Mega to the Mega to the Mega with Epsilon 2 plus 1 at the top, this is called Epsilon 3. We can keep increasing the index of Epsilon. Yes, we're allowed to use Mega. We can even have Epsilon Naught as our index. We can keep nesting Epsilon Naught an infinite number of times. Then we'll reach our next infinite ordinal, which is Zeta Naught. That's it for today's video. I hope you all enjoyed.